know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. Yeah. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Oh, nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was before I was me? I was you. you. Man school, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first because if you don't, they won't. Uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Harry, what's going on, baby? How you feeling? I'm feeling great, man. Uh, other than just trying to keep these gators down. Yeah, I, I, this is a special show. I know I've said that 500 times before, but <laughs> mm-hmm. this time I really mean it. Um, yeah. Every time uh, you say that, it sounds more and more <laughs> like a hostage note that you're reading. <laughs> this is a special show. We are being treated we good. We are being treated Death good. to the West. <laughs> America and their fascists. <laughs> <laughs> You want to do the introduction to Harry, please? Yeah, Ray. man. I mean, we have some unique guests, but this is definitely a unique guest among our many unique guests because this man is the only, not the only person, but he's one of the few people who've done a special, I believe, uh, which is also available in Mandarin. He'll correct me if I'm wrong on this. Uh, a new one hour special. He's also the only comedian, I believe, with his own cryptocurrency. Uh, give it up for Brett Raybold, everybody. The Renaissance man himself. Yeah, Brett Raybold. Or, the, or the weirdo. Either way, whatever. <laughs> That's right, man. I'm good to be here. I got my balls in check, so All I'm right. glad to be here. I, we, that remains to see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> you guys are the judge whether I have my balls in tow. All right, that's fair. I'm yep. cool with that. We don't have to see him, so don't worry about oh, okay. that. Yeah. So, so first, of all, first of all, what, what, what did you always speak Mandarin, or did you le- learn, or what, how did that happen? No, so that was an idea I had. So I have my hour special on YouTube, and then I just thought it would be funny to have it in Mandarin. Mm-hmm. I don't speak any Mandarin. Okay. I don't know Mandarin. So I just had that idea. So I like. One of my buddies does speak Mandarin, so he did some translating of the jokes on it. And uh-huh. then I also hired a couple people off of Fiverr. To uh-huh. do like, like I hired this guy to do uh, the voiceover for it uh-huh. and translate it. And it was so funny because this dude, so he, tra- he, he did voiceover for the whole hour, all the jokes I have. Right, right. And then he uh, messages me and he's like, just let me know if that works for you, if there are any mistakes. And you're like, dude, I don't, I don't fucking, I don't fucking know, Mandarin. <laughs> How am I gonna find out? <laughs> I just have to go off faith that it. Right, 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 right. You're not just saying like I'm an asshole. Now, you know, is there dick. not? Is there not a um? Like, I mean, you know, you find that sometimes there's a difference in in culture in terms of what's. You know what I mean? I, how do you sure. even? So is dude. it just you just rolling the dice on this? I, you know what? I have no idea if it works in Chinese. If the really? ju- like, I just had them do it. Uh, well, we and- gotta ask Des Bishop. The only guy I know who's done one is comedian Des Bishop, but he actually learned Mandarin, so it's slightly well, he did different. his in Mandarin. Oh, he yeah. did his in Mandarin, not to oh, downplay he- yours. No, no, no. Mm. So he's like he does stand up in Mandarin. Oh wow! He is does that- a couple of languages, I think. Holy shit, because mine is I speak English and then there is a you know how there's like a Chinese dub on movies and it doesn't match the that's that is that. Okay, but the opposite way. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But he is actually doing stand up in Mandarin. Is that right? Yeah, Yeah. that's correct. Yeah. 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 I mean, he did it in China as well. 
That's way more impressive than the oh, boy. <laughs> Sorry, you know what? Uh, than the bullshit I farted out on. Oh. Uh, uh, Brett, thanks for joining us. We're going to try to get Des Bishop on. To, uh... <laughs> it was a good three minutes. It's still, pretty, cool. I, it's still pretty. I mean, I watched some clips of it. I mean, it's entertaining to watch. It's. A, uh, I don't understand Mandarin either, so I have right, no idea right. how good it is. But yeah. did you do closed caption as well or no? There's. A, I think there are English subs on it. That's right. Okay. So. So, no, I mean, I have the English version, which is, you know, but uh, yeah. did you, Harry, I imagine you just scrolled through to go, oh, shit, it's still in Mandarin. Like, you just kind of. I mean, I checked out some of the Instagram clips, so some of the Instagram clips are great. I think there's a, a screen grab of some subtitles where you're clearly I, I get what the bit is in English where you're yelling at the audience. So, <laughs> let me see if I can find it. Yeah, but the. I... the the uh, the Mandarin translation to English is even more hilarious because I can't imagine that's what you said. <laughs> but let me find it while you guys uh, I'm going to find it. It, it so. is funny because the you know, there are just English words that don't translate. Don't translate. Right. So yeah. it'll just yeah. be like Sun Tung Pao to the Dung Tung George W. Bush. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Dun Dung Pong Tung Arby's. But I put that. It's crazy. And what you just thought it would be funny and figure you do shoot your shot. So much of my stuff is just like uh, I just think it would be weird and funny. And if it's not too difficult of a joke, like if that took hours and hours and if it cost a lot of money, honestly, <laughs> that was like it cost me in total probably around one hundred fifty dollars paying freelancers. And I go, <sighs> even I can afford that. I right, can, right, right, right. That is a uh, for how long it lasts. That is a worth 150 bucks yeah yeah and that ain't bad fiber is a good place to go bro yeah it's a good place to grow that's um, you start but, getting your gas off fiber you're like uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay so i have uh i have something it's can a, you put it on the screen up it's a picture oh wait, i don't have it on i had it on, i pulled it up on my phone but it's you yelling at your saxophone player and then the subtitle, he adamantly denies that he gave himself an encore and condemns any assertion that he did <laughs> as salacious uh scrolly scrolyless drivel scrolyless drivel is that i mean is that the english word Scur scurrilous 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 dribble. scurrilous dribble so, so it and makes you yelling at your saxophone player which i don't know why you have a saxophone player but that also <laughs> makes it i mean he's also doing it in a tuxedo it's great it's great stuff just in general you if you like the manner version, I'll tell you what, the English version makes probably more sense. It's a, <laughs> a little every, bit. I'm pretty proud. It's a weird special. It's the only special where the comedian retires at the end of it. It's called, <laughs> yeah, Brett Ray will retire from comedy. I retired within the special so that I could pursue a career in jazz. Mm -hmm. I did about an hour of traditional stand up and then I said I'm retiring from comedy so I could pursue a career in jazz. I released a jazz album called Brett on Buble. It's a cover album of Michael Buble songs. That's insane. It went 34 on jazz, just below Harry Connick Jr. So, um, it's now, a, I, wait, okay, so you... It's, it's weird, Dante. State. It's a weird piece of comedy. I know you're like, you're still doing... I unretired. You still... Weeks. Oh, so you're doing comedy again now. Yeah, I had to unretire about two weeks later. Turns out I severely miscalculated my finances and I uh, uh, didn't have enough money to coast. Now, did you want to quit and just did it for finance or did you really... Did you I miss mean, comedy and want to go back? I mean, uh, you know, I, I wanted to do the bit of retiring so that I could be a jazz singer. Uh -huh. To answer your follow-up question... You know, no, I don't really have any singing talent, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, within the bit, I'll always act like I was destined to be a singer. But if I don't play the character, right, right. I was I was doing it for the bit, okay. not to mention, like, I like the idea of adding stakes to a show. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm not a big draw. S surprise, surprise. Yeah, right, um, right. You might be shocked. No, but, not uh, in this country, but I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Right. Mandarin, you're, yeah. you're off the hook. They roll uh, out the red carpet for you when you go to China, bro. That's right, man. That's right. I, uh, <laughs> I'm, you know, I got millions of fans out there, but uh, so it also like it's a funny, weird thing to do. And it also, when I said retire from comedy, mm. me who's not a draw had an easier job time selling out uh, the venue I did it in. I did it at Stand Up New York. So, okay. Um, you know, I was able to, that's about 140 seater, which yeah. I don't have that, not even yeah, that yeah. amount, but with some of the stakes and the weirdness of this, 
of the show and uh, just kind of, you know, promoting it at every spot I had in the city where I would just say, hey, I'm retiring from comedy. I'd have random people be like, oh, that's weird and interesting. And All right, let me go. Let me go see what he does. <laughs> let me go see if this guy, it's a good but idea. That's for, the weird yeah. part of human nature is that uh, and right? not, to, not to be uh, not to offend Brett, but just by no. your own statement, you go, no one gives a shit about this. Yes. But now that no. I'm unretiring, <laughs> all of a sudden it's a draw in a weird way. And it just shows you the, the nature of how influenced people are by labels of things. Yeah. You know, how you're able to really manipulate people to a degree or how you can just change your perspective the way you present something. Because it's just another show in theory yeah. and two yeah. weeks later. But it's unretiring, and now it's a big unveil. Oh, you got to see this! Oh, you got to see this guy. Brett is coming back. <laughs> yeah, that's it's like this guy is retiring. Wow, he must be good if he's retiring. I mean, at, at my level, it's like giving up. How long? Quick. How long have you been doing doing comedy? Yeah, I've been doing stand up about uh, seven, eight in between seven and eight years, and okay. then full time for like three, three and a half. I've been okay. able to like uh, chop out a living from a lot of like self produced one nighters on the road. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So although that, you know, like for many, obviously the pandemic has made that a more uh, tenuous yeah, yeah. or ch more challenging yeah, yeah. continuity of my. Tell me about this Bitcoin. You know, you got your own. Bitcoin. There it is. I got the I got the stupid hat, too. This is the dumb hat I wear. What's the name of the coin? It's uh, it's called Brett coin. It's a uh, it's I'm the world's first publicly traded comedian. So. <laughs> You know, if you go to brettcoin.org, it's basically the world's first uh, cryptocurrency buy a comic. And, uh, you know, if you think I'm funny, you can buy in. It's trading right. on an exchange called Uniswap for those who know crypto. And uh, if you think I suck, then you should probably sell or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or go short on it. But uh, I mean, it's part bit and it's kind of like a lot of things I do. It's part bit, but it's part earnest project like well, the thing yeah. is you really did it i mean that's i mean well, you, you really actually made, have a coin you actually have a coin so yeah i didn't develop the technology so there's a fan of mine who is uh, a 17 year old high school senior and uh it's already sounding weird when i say his age <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but this guy this guy one time messaged me on instagram and he was like hey man i'm a fan i'd love to just chat with you and so I, I was like, sure, man. And I call him up. And the first thing he said was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm talking to you. When yeah. it's, it's like this dude has no idea how available I am. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, like, like, you you want to talk now? I mean, right yeah. now? I mean, can, like, can I? Yeah. Can I oh, are you going to go to school? Can I call you after you get out of school? <laughs> I'm like hitting him up like, yeah, when are we talking? When are we talking? Like, what are we talking? He's like, whoa. By three so days just, into it, he's like, this fucking guy, I can't avoid this. That's fucking kind of dude. That's dude. That's kind of what actually happened because, uh, you know, so I told him on the phone, I was like, yeah, I want to do all my own crypto. And you, dude, kids are so good at making tech. I was yeah. like, do you know how to do that? And he, he goes, 100%. I know how to do that. So I was like, do you want to do this with me? And he was like, fuck it. Let's do it. So uh, oh it wasn't until recently where he was like, I had no idea what I was doing, but I just wanted to be involved in the project. Uh -huh. And he um, just figured it out, literally just figured it out. He figured it out. It's like it actually is trading on an exchange. Uh, we launched with uh, what I call an IBO, which is an initial Brett offering. <laughs> of a uh, hundred thousand tokens at about twelve cents per token, we this sold all so very Andy Kaufman esque, which I, I, I love about it. But it also must suck because every how many did you, you sell? Yeah, uh, I so I sold almost uh, in in pre market. I sold about fifty thousand, and in currently in market, I've sold about fifty thousand. So around ten thousand dollars worth. Nice. Um, that's you know, it's all the money. People go, is it go into your pocket? No, it goes toward. Two things. One, building the liquidity of the token. And two, uh, and it's part of why I launched it, is it's mm. not just a bit. I'm actually trying to raise money to make a movie. Mm. Um, one of my really good uh, friends from Life and Comedy and I wrote a movie. We won a big script contest. We sent it out to all the managers, producers, and agents mm. at this winning this big contest afforded right. us. And most people said, like, it's really funny. We don't want to be the ones to make it. I, it makes sense if I tell you kind of what the movie's about because it's 
for it's kind of artistically seemingly risky or did risque. you pitch it to them while wearing that hat? Cause that might've been, <laughs> I would feel like that might've been part of the problem. They're like, I don't know if we should buy this movie from the special needs guy. Uh, <laughs> they said, they said no to the movie, but they go, we'll take some of that uh, cryptocurrency you got. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that sounds like a good idea. I go, They're like, hey, uh, uh, lighthouse production is a guy on here with a, a sun visor from, uh, from Hogwarts, the, the, the dwarves. <laughs> Can we get security? We're being harassed by a man with a propeller hat. So, what's the deal with the 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 movie? What's the what is the? So uh, it's uh, as I try and tell people, it's a, it's basically a modern version of Blazing Saddles. It's, okay. Uh, if uh, Blazing Saddles was made today, it's like throwback slapstick, but updated to fit our modern conversations. The movie is called race the movie and then in parentheses it's about race uh -huh. now to answer follow up my co-writer is not white uh uh -huh. just as a heads up and uh you know what scary movie was to the horror movie genre race mm -hmm. the movie is to the i would say oscar bait race movie genre Mm. Uh, so you know it makes fun of all the white savior slash prestige race movies in a spoof the in help and the like, help yeah yeah uh, oh. Uh, you know, Green Book. Uh, wow. But then the, its original title to like give you perspective on what the comedy is. Its original title was not another slave movie. So okay. uh, <laughs> that should, that and they kinda, passed on that, huh? I, I you know Paramount what? said they didn't want anything to do with that. <laughs> I, it's uh, I don't even know if it ever. I bet you could get the Wayans brothers to do it. <laughs> you know what's you know what's funny, Dante? You want to hear this true story? I've tried very hard to get it to Marlon Wayans via yeah. some odd and creative ways. Uh -huh. I, I really think he's the perfect person for it because yeah. uh, I think like you know movie comedies have kind of suffered in the last decade. Uh, you, I don't know if there's really been a really great one that a lot of people like a pure capital C comedy. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, I think it's a wow. great idea, dude. I've, I've never seen anybody and this would be a perfect time to do it. Um, I think when is uh, Marlon's uh, doesn't he have an HBO special he's getting ready to drop? I thought it was Netflix, but let me see. Is it? I think it's HBO. So, I mean, I'll tell you this story on the podcast. Um, yeah. So I actually uh, went to Marlin, had a show at Gotham like a week or two ago. Uh -huh. And I had my co-writer and I, there's that app Cameo. Have you heard of that? Yeah. yeah. So Cameo, Marlin is on Cameo. Uh, I think he raised his rate when we, when we booked him, he was $500. We'd made a 30 second video that was like, Hey dude, we don't care about any video message. We're just two writers and comedians uh we wrote this movie we kind of wrote it with you in mind so we just hope you take a look at it and mm -hmm. he wrote he had a little video message back that said like that sounds great i'll have my uh producing partner uh you know get back any listed his producing partner's email i'll have him hit you back mm -hmm. uh, and uh we said if, if uh if you don't like it then uh refund us our money and he said, uh, and, and if it's whack, I'm keeping your money. <laughs> and we're all, That's funny. It's, it's That's just funny. Like, it's, yeah. So, I, so cut to last about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, Marlon's show at Gotham. I went to it and, uh, I, you know, I brought the script. I don't know. I don't, we never heard from his manager. I don't think you want to know the truth. Maybe this is ego talking. I don't think his manager ever read it because if he had read it, I think it would have. I think he would have done it. I absolutely think he would have done it. Like, yeah. cause I, I really think we wrote, uh, you know, something. I really think we wrote a special movie. That's why I do these quirky odd things. And did you? Did you? When you pitched Dante, it to him, did you? Zoom in and out there for a second. Sorry. Did you? Camera. When you? When you? Uh, pitched it on Cameo, right? Did yeah. you? Did you, you? Did you not tell him what it was about? I uh, yeah, we been we we told them the premise like in like, you know, 15 to 30 Seconds. second elevator yeah. pitch just to. Yeah. Um, so we yeah, we mentioned the premise, which is like, you know, not another slave movie, basically scary movie. But for I think, a, race, gen I think a genre yeah. that needs to be made fun of, like, yeah. like, yeah. Uh, you know, Hollywood has kind of been. I think it's a brilliant idea, dude. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I really, I really think it's a brilliant idea. Like, that's why I'm trying really hard to get it made. I really think America, like, I think it's high tide that we have a the return of slapstick to movie form. 
We just don't yeah. see it anymore. It's for whatever reason, I think something happened. With and then comedy. somebody to take those kind of movies and make them and, and just not take it so seriously. What I think would be uh, pretty fucking awesome. Yeah, you know? I think uh, I think that would. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's about a topic that you hear about and you go. A lot of people are like they're tense or they just immediately go like, whoa. Mm-hmm. And you're like, I think when you do that, you give things more power and and i don't think like you know we're comics we don't i don't think the right approach is to just like quarantine away a subject and go don't go there ever yeah that's like well then you're making it like uh let me ask you something how do you how do you do with the ladies because i i I, i'm gonna gonna tell you what i think i think i'm so excited to hear this okay well i think you should do really well because of the fact that you're so comfortable in your skin and you're, you're so comfortable in your expression. I could see how you would do pretty fucking good. And if you're not, uh, we definitely need to talk because that <laughs> it's, you have a, there's a, there's a character, there's a, there's a quality that you have that is the key to attraction. Do you know okay. what quality is that? It's sincerity? just this sincerity. It's there's a there's a, a level of comfort comfort in your skin. I mean, I'm a, you know, I'm. I mean, I I I. It's funny. It's not. It's not the six pack. It's not your BMW. It's not your money. It's not. It's that none of that. None of that keeps a chick. What keeps a chick is 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 truth, credibility, and empathy. Do you know what I mean? And sure. and I and I think that, you know, we've you know, one of those, you know, we we, we talk about ace uh, authenticity, credibility and empathy. Um, but it really does come down to that. And when you get situations where people got guys do pick up and stuff, you, they learn all these techniques and this and that. But it, it's, it's you, there's no honesty and, and women can really detect a level of dishonesty and dishonesty, dishonesty reads as dangerous or creepy because if you're being deceptive sure. you're hiding something and if you're hiding something i mean women women you know i've said this a thousand times when a woman goes out with a guy she has to consider being murdered you know <laughs> she's gonna she has to decide if you go into olive garden with free bread steaks and, and salad is worth her getting murdered and and so Bruh. this is a this is a and moreover than not they pitch they pick the breadsticks you know what i mean they take so, the risk yeah and so yeah. so but when there's a blatant kind of deceptiveness it it feels like it feels like to women it feels like deceptiveness and dangerous because why yeah. is he hiding? What is he hiding? What what why is he being deceptive? And I and I think that you have a really kind of honest take on things. I mean, you're you're first of all super creative. Uh any woman would oh. go, wow, this guy's really committed. Like he has his own Bitcoin and he has and he's and he's he he doesn't sing, but he wants to do he's gonna be quit, he's gonna retire to do I mean he's a really it's never out. boring, that's for sure. It's yeah, yeah, never, yeah. It's, it's a always waste exciting. of time. It's all a good waste of time. <laughs> I mean I feel bad because I don't want anytime I get a good joke, I barely want to get up and write it down into my phone. Meanwhile, anytime Brett has an idea, he's gotta build a fucking time machine and <laughs> he's gotta get somebody to pedal a bicycle. Where can I get somebody to, where can I get a rickshaw at three o'clock in the morning? <laughs> I waste I waste my hard earned money on this dumb bit for absolutely nobody. <laughs> Not yet until it's for Not somebody. Yet. Not, Not yet. yet but but it, I have a feeling that that's going to change eventually that people takes time for people to catch up to you. You know, what I mean, sometimes. But how do you how do you do? How do you do? You know, I think uh, I do decently well. I'm not uh, I'm not like a Casanova who's out here trying to like woo the woo the ladies. But, uh, you know, when I go on dates like that's when people talk about like awful dates. I don't I think I'm a pretty good. I'm interested in people like I like talking with people. And I think I like I like weird or bad or awful ish experiences because they're just kind of interest. They're kind of funny. Like, uh, you know, what I'm, like I'll I'll here's an example. I will happily see a band I think sucks mm-hmm. because if I have like, you know, free tickets or something, if right. my buddy wants me to come because that's part of it. So uh, I do OK. Uh, you know, I have a girlfriend right now who's Dude, this woman is uh, so much more successful than me. It's funny. 
And but this, I want to hear your perspective on this. All right, I'll tell you, Dante is not thrilled with that comment right off yeah, the top. Yeah, that, that, Dante, that, but we'll that go. That sours my fucking. Hold on, Dante. Hold on. Hold on. Hang with me. So she is. She's fiscally more successful. Right. Uh, you know, I'm happy with my self expression. I'm happy that I'm able to scrape out a living at a very. You know, I'm very. I'm proud of that accomplishment. It's not right. an easy thing. Mm-hmm. But um, here, I want to hear your perspective on this. This is this. This all you'll you'll make fun of perhaps my lack of balls. Okay. So my lady, she works at a uh, she works at a hedge fund. Um, I I I already knew that. <laughs> like I already I was already going to ask you what uh, tight what ass financial. job yeah. does she have that has no creativity. No, you just, uh, but you know, what drone, what pencil skirt uh, <laughs> job does she flat work shoes. at? What flat yeah. shoes? Uh, <laughs> what two inch heels job? <laughs> now, now, in her defense, she is a creative person. I honestly, and, uh, you know, she's. She's pretty remarkable that she's working where she works at, given that she's a, a first generation American. Her parents immigrated here from Cuba when they were like 20. OK, um, so and, and in her head, she's not trying to stay there forever. She's 26. She wants mm-hmm. to do a, a couple more years and just, you know, secure the bag and have uh, a good financial footing so that she then can probably pursue a more meaningful career, uh, yada, yada, yada. But well, when you say creative, creative, how? How is she creative? I mean, I just sometimes I feel like it's just conversationally. Uh, so she, she's, you know what well, I mean? Look, let's be, I mean, you got to look. She's, she's, you said she's from Cuba, first generation immigrant. She's, she's from Jersey, born and raised in Jersey, but her parents but are from uh, uh, Cuba. So they've been, you know, you did, you, there's something to uh, going through some shit. Sure. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, there's something to going through some shit, you know, with your parents, uh, you know, have gone through some shit, came here, you know, for the better life, this, that, the other. There, there, there's something to that in general that I think gives you gives somebody the depth of of humanity because you know what it is to not have or to have or to have people that you love ones that you that don't have. You know, right. Um, but creative is a is a it's a strong word when you talk about somebody who just is a you know good person or somebody that has depth to their personality because they've suffered or been through or seen suffering or whatever. I, I think that's a different thing. And so, what I would I would I, my take on it is first of all that. A woman never dates somebody who she doesn't think is better than her. Never happens. Interesting. Um, if she doesn't think you're better than her. Better being a relative term, of course. Better, sure, better sure. is a relative so term, important. but bet always better. Sure. So the minute you become not better than her, she dumps you. That's when the relationship goes to shit. So, but what you have in, in, so I, I've had this. You also in, said this. I want to add this, Dante, because you said this last time. I think it's important to add when you make that statement that she wants, she's adding something to her life that she does not already have. Absolutely. And that's part of what makes it better. So sure. let's say, for example, a woman is very financially secure, but she may, might not be emotionally secure or she might not be physically secure. She might mm-hmm. need you to comfort her physically. So it might not be financial support. It might be something else, because I think sometimes people get the idea that it's just about she, supporting her. She basically is going, I, I know how to get the bag. I don't need yeah. a dude that knows how to, to get the racks. So I, I don't need that, that. But I'm not fulfilled in that. And I, I can do that. And I'll and I'll. I'll put my nose to the grindstone. I mean, people who have suffered, especially immigrants who have suffered, they know how to they know how to wake up and go to work and do the shit job and yeah. the thing that they hate doing because they they know there are always periods of time where you don't even have that as an option. Sure. Okay. So there's that. But um the I, I I so I years ago I was I remember being 23 years old, I was dating this uh this FBI uh, agent, this chick, smoking hot, crazy body. She's about she's about in her mid thirties, 
I was like 20. Oh, wow. Are you, sure 23? are you sure you were dating her? Or is this a porno that you saw? Because this is very specific. <laughs> <can't say. laughs> Sometimes I feel uh, like you confuse real life. A lot, with, uh, a lot of my stories are <laughs> porno stories. If you yeah. Really, yeah. Remember that Dante. time you were dating that girl who was a cheerleader and a MILF at the same time? <laughs> Dante was a pizza delivery guy, I believe. Yeah. I was uh, like, uh, who ordered the sausage? <laughs> so, but, uh, um, 23 it's, dating a mid 30 year old yeah, and like a was, successful career woman oh like, yeah she clearly. had it all together had a glock you know she wow. had her gun the yeah, edge she had you know um that's the definition of having it all together yeah, she's got her <laughs> shit together she's condo you know, gotta... bmw the whole shit okay and yeah. at the time I, I was a male stripper at the time right oh shit yeah and and uh she you know perfect house everything impeccable but always worried about the next thing the bills to this i was living at home on a futon in my mom's basement right and just didn't give a fuck like yeah. i i just didn't i i just always felt like look i don't have money i'll, I'll make some money i mean i always kind of had i had a, always money I, I always found ways to to get money and stuff but right um it just my concern for those things just wasn't there and i realized that she was with me because of that like she had it all together she had everything was very precise and put into place but the bottom line with any of it was she didn't have the recklessness that i had like i just didn't like yo well you know if you don't if it don't work out we'll, we'll figure it out like we'll, we'll we'll figure it out and that's what she it also is what she loved about me and what she hated about me Sure. You know, which a lot of times it's like, you, you know, I look, it's, it's fun. but I was strong and a strong enough personality that I would just go, look, it's it's um, it'll be fine. I go, yeah. I mean, what do you still have your job? You're right. She goes, yeah, I go, well, you you're going to get a check next week. Right. So you but I have to do this in my mind. It's like, let's relax. Let's just fuck. And it'll yeah, all sir. it'll all fall into places. In all fairness, that's your solution to a lot of problems. Kind of, yeah. You let's just fuck, and it'll all fall into places. <laughs> and I think the power's out in the house. Let's just <laughs> fuck and <laughs> see what happens. I have if a I, rash on my genitals. Yeah. Let's just fuck. Let's just fuck it off. If I, listen, if I had a nickel for <laughs> every time I, that was my response, I'd have a whole lot of nickels. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you had a Brett coin from every time, yeah, uh, you, would you would have be... known you would not be selling Brett coin. I'd have more. <laughs> You'd be um, a majority shareholder. Uh, so so I think what happens is in this is that you what comes easy to you this is this creativity and this recklessness. What you what you perceive is just like, ah, oh, fuck it. I'm you know, I'm, I'm going for it. Right. Sure. And she doesn't have that. And that's, so you that's what she gets from you, which is, which is true. Like, uh, you know, I have had conversations with her about, you know, just other men she's dated, other days she's gone on yet. And uh, she has just told me, like, she's dated, uh, you know, probably a lot of boners in her yeah. even in her field that are she's sure. just like they take her to a nice place. But, you know, if the conversation's boring in a nice room, who cares? Yeah. yeah. Um, to a degree, obviously. Still and you having... can get it. You can go get a, a hot dog and, and it will be a ball. That's right. That's yeah. right. Brett, Brett will go, hey, it's time, let's go get some pizza. I got a rat costume I got to put on. I'll explain later. <laughs> just hold the camera and uh, like, all right, let's do it. Listen, I just want you to hit me with a live chicken. Yeah. Right, just, what? Just, well, that's what I'm into. That's just what I'm into. Sexually, I want a live chicken in the bedroom. You know. So it's a, it's 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 an interesting thing because what what comes so easy to you is really not easy. I mean, I, I, I mean, Harry has a bit of that kind of Kaufman esque kind of thing in him, you know. But yeah, Harry, it, you don't really you if there's I know because Harry won the Andy Kaufman. Award, the, you know, the they, Kaufman I, award. Oh, wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. That's a Which big I think you deal. would be just knowing what you do now. I think you would be winning it this Dude, year. Tell me it's, more. It's still around. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. A, he, he lost it a couple years in a row. But what but I did was I kept losing. I would do bits and I, I think 
I was so good that they kept having me back every year. I do something new every year, but I that's lost even, like four or five years in a row. That's even more Kaufman like. Right. Yeah. So yeah. the final one was I started. Uh, I just went on stage and did a rant. How about I'm sick and tired of losing the Andy Kaufman award. <laughs> then I made a short film where I built a time machine and then traveled and back in time to kill the period, all the, the people who, who won. all the people who won the Andy Kaufman award so that I could be the only one who would win it. That's a hands down. That has to hands down be the winning thing. And, and it won. he was it talking. Won. He set it up so the video. He he was talking, was talking to, to the, myself, future in self, the video, which the you future. can watch on YouTube if you look up my, I'm gonna my look this YouTube up. page. Harry Turjani and Andy Kaufman Award. It's gonna, a long yeah. uh, thing, but I think you'd appreciate it. But man, it was a lot of work. Look at bro. look at yeah. <laughs> look at Fred's eyes when you're telling her. He's like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Fred's jacking off, <laughs> rubbing my nipples." I'm like, "Oh shit, Harry, tell me more. <laughs> Fuck. Let me go grab my live chicken so I can, uh, you know, really so, yeah, wipe one yeah, out." He really went to town on that. I mean, he he did great stuff before that, but he just just didn't wing the and and and, and then the judges because some of the judges were previous winners. And so he actually assassinated them in, in the in, video. In, in, I got the previous winners involved. Yeah. So funny, man. I had him do cameos and stuff. I mean, it was a lot of fun, but it's a lot of creativity, man. Like you have to find something really out there. But that's what's great about you. So do you ever bring that into the dating life at all? Because you're very creative. The problem is sometimes really creative people leave it on the stage, so to speak. You're a really creative sure. dude because you're coming up with all these different concepts and you're all these projects that you're doing. Do you ever bring that into the relationship or dating? I mean, I think uh, I, it's a, certainly a component of who I am because, you know, but I, it's not like I'm on a first date like, hey, I had a uh, hour special. It's on YouTube. Do you want to watch? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. you're not like self from I mean, don't yeah, get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. I'll get my plugs in wherever I can. Uh, yeah. Just dude, like do, a week do you, and a half on ago. dates. Do you go? Do you guys uh, take Bert coin? <laughs> uh, you guys, uh, I don't know, sir. What what are you talking about? Oh, you don't, no you guys, you don't no guys, break, no break coin? Uh, you don't uh, guys okay. take break coin? You know what kind of establishment is this? What kind of <laughs> pat? You guys are going to close down soon if you don't have the most you mainstream should. currency on the market. Yeah. Um, insane. Sorry, babe. Uh, Brett coin. Uh, I don't mean to explain it to a novice, but it's a currency <laughs> that I that I actually own. I own it. It's a, yeah, I, I own them. I own it. So, yeah. what's it worth? Potentially billions. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you know that's my goal, guys. I actually with Brett Coin, I am trying to become comedy's first billionaire. <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld is at nine hundred eighty million dollars. So I got I got some catching up to do. A I, but, bit, but you know you never know. You know you you're, yeah. you're like a Jamaican track star. You finish <laughs> coming out strong in the end, bro. He did one <laughs> show. I yeah, mean, you're so doing what, seventeen projects. Who, we all know Brett Coin is a bigger deal than Seinfeld. What kind of <laughs> rinky-dink show it was might that? Might be a bigger deal in China. I don't know if Seinfeld's in China. I don't know if do they know about your Brett Coin? You, uh, did you did you announce your Brett Coin on your I, special? I've tried. No, the Brett Coin that idea came later. Although oh, you man. know, here's the ne the next bit idea. Just to let you guys know, it's called Brett Rabel goes public. I'll do a bigger IBO. Uh, and I'll do like a little finance presentation on why I'm a good investment. So that's that's the next hour special or like it'll, you know, mix of traditional stand up with weird stuff, which is like what I try and I how, love did, doing. how did the special do on YouTube in China? It Oh, so they actually don't have YouTube in China. Uh, the Mandarin version has like a thousand views. My like English one has like 55, 56. Now, is there any way you could get it to China? Like, is there a platform that you're there or it's just everything is? I, I actually don't know because China Chinese government is very uh, they're very anti my stand up comedy specifically. Um, uh, oh, boy. no, no. But they, uh, they told you that <laughs> no, no, I got it. Yeah, I got a letter from President uh, Xi or <laughs> Xi Ping said, no, nah, these jokes. Stink. Scott, do you Listen, this is not good. This doesn't this go along with the supreme leader. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, there's some. They have their own version of YouTube or something. I forget what it's called. I might see if I can upload it. There's yeah, that yeah. would be, I mean, be somebody dude, who's got a window dude, into China. Here's, here's the crazy thing about this. If you here's the thing. Once you make it as a comic. Your Brett coin is going to blow the fuck up. Can you imagine if Kevin Hart so, did a fucking uh, 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 cryptocurrency? Oh. Well, that's that's the thing. This is why mine is a good one, because I'm not famous, because right. I haven't landed. I'm not some right, right. very successful guy. 
Because that's the investment you want to make. The one that you know. Oh, fuck, man. He's getting me. This son of a bitch. Are you going to go? I think I'm going to go. Get some <laughs> <coin>. <laughs> I think I might have to. I can't risk not doing it. I'm going to feel like an asshole now. Just go for the purpose that he brought it up. Go get a hundred coins. If it goes up to if it goes up to a thousand bucks. I got to do right. it. All right. If listen, I have some cryptocurrency. Listen. I can figure out how to use that app. So okay. it's called Uniswap. Go to Uniswap.org. Oh, I Jesus. also have a how to buy Brett coin on the YouTube channel. Okay. It's a three to four minute tutorial. All right. I'm going to do this. I think I have to do this. Um, it's, it's <laughs> I, you know, I will be honest, like you're basically making a bet that I'll get more famous than where I am right yeah. now. Mm. I can't get less famous, quite literally. So, right. and, <laughs> and I'll be honest, hey, baby, I'm not going to, I'm not going to empty out the bank account. <laughs> we got to go to the bank tomorrow yeah. morning. You're Don't taking out, a, taking out a loan. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's it's but, smart, dude. It's, uh, but you know, I'm sorry. Well, we got off track again. I wonder, do you bring any of this insane and wonderful creativity to your relationships and stuff? I, you know, I try and be creative within the relationship. Um, you know, doing like uh, you know weird things that can surprise a partner. But um, I maybe you know I do reserve most of my creativity probably for it's pursuing and attempting yeah. comedy. Um, mm. This is but this is the one thing I did want to get your guys' take on because I okay. think you'll either make fun, you'll probably make fun of me. Um, so the, like I set up, my my lady works at a hedge fund, very successful job. But this is what's bullshit. Mm. You know, I like my, I we st I still pay for most dinners. How fucked up is that? I'm oh, some boy. I'm like a broke uh, comic. Well, let me ask you this. It, yeah. would she pay for it, or is it that you you insist on paying for it? Yeah, you know, I insist less and less the more we date. <laughs> How long have you been dating? About five, uh, five to six months. Oh, it's, it's early. It's early. Dude. It's I mean, look, early. yeah, yeah. I, 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 I look, I don't make fun. Look, I pay. I pay the bill. You know, if I, I always pay the bill. I, I mean, early, I, early on, I'm like, just if, as a guy, I'm like, just pay it. Just pay it. Yeah. Even if the well, date doesn't I, go I well, I do that a lot of time. Like I'm a dude, I'll, I'll pick up the bill if it's if I'm with Harry, I'll pick up the bill. Like, you know what I mean? I mean, if I, if we got a bunch of people, a lot of times I'll very pick up generous. The bill. Very um, generous. and so I think it's not it, you know where you would think I would be against it. Not so much. I, I I think so. Here's here's what I think. What I why I think you know, um, and this is not just you. This is guys in general. The qualities, their best qualities and what is most interesting about them, um, they never think that those things are valuable. They always think that those things have no value. And, and, and it makes sense because it, those things come easy to you. Like it's easy for you to create, create and, and throw yourself into behind something and simply because it's, it, it interests you on an artistic level and so on and so forth. But what you don't understand is that's a very rare thing. It's like, it's like this, just even when Harry, when you start jacking off because of Harry's Andy Kaufman thing, there's a, you know what I'm saying? There's a, there's an honesty and a truthfulness in that. So when I say I pay the bill, I don't pay the bill because, um, I, I, I'm not, I to mean, I, 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 yeah, it's not me showing off. It's just me. I'm a generous dude who I know most of the time. Now, if I'm around, well, if I'm around people like comics that are way ahead of me and they want to pick up the bill, I, I mean, I usually, yeah, I kind of look. So I'm, I do well enough that I can. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm not, I'm not in a situation where I'm not rich. But I, 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 you know, I'm not hungry. I'm not looking for, you know, I'm not worried sure. about nothing. Um, so it's nothing for me to pick up a bill. I mean, there was a time when it was when I didn't have that and I had to scramble and I, and I know what that's like. And so it, it speaks to the empathy of me being a young dude who didn't have things and people didn't pick up the bill for me when they could have. Um, you know, I've always had a, I, you know, since I got in this in, in, in started doing comedy, I always had a car. I always gave comics rides. I mean, like I remember in in, a, in you know, driving Judy Gold home with her big ass feet 
and <laughs> what a specific and, memory. Yeah, <laughs> and and you know, talking to her like I was very young and just picking her brain about comedy and what she because you know I grew up watching her and stuff. And so I think, but I think the real point is the truth of it. To the same token, I think is if you don't have the money, can you say to your girl, "Look, I, I just don't have it." You know what I mean? I, yeah. I just don't have it. Can you uh, can you cover it? At, and at, yeah. Go ahead. No, go ahead. At, at, at this stage, the, I mean, it's it is truthful at this stage. Like it would be like I I can pick up these, you know, 30 right. to 50 dollar checks. They're not right. Right. that isn't, it not isn't killing breaking you. my bank like, right. uh, you know, but it, I will say it does have a vibe. Sometimes she'll when she pays her half, the vibe is like she's treating me. Does that make sense? Oh, because she pays. Yeah, well, you got to. But then, then I she's think like, you gotta, you're welcome. I'm like, the fuck, you just paid for your shit. Now, if she said you're, you're welcome, you wouldn't. You don't check that. No, she you know says that? in like a playful way, like like the vibe. Yeah, to be clear. But I know I will. The way I check it is I check it with a smile. Like I check it with a smile. I don't make it a deal. But uh, I, OK, okay so about that. Ooh, that, ooh, that's go. uncomfortable. That, uh -oh. That's a little uncomfortable. Uh -oh. picking up the, bill yeah, the, the pick, picking up the bill doesn't bother me. Yeah. Um, her having the hedge fund, um, you kind of you kind of bullshitted your way on her being creative. But <laughs> <laughs> but but the 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 when, you know, it's one thing I, I like, I don't know. Harry, I don't think I've ever had anybody who says, oh, Dante will pick it up. You know what I mean? Like, I um, I don't think anyone's outright done that. No, if somebody no did that, I would shut it down immediately. I, right. You know, yeah. you know, I like no, if, you. You go out of your way to pick it. up. I think some people assume, but nobody verbally ever says if somebody if I thought that people didn't appreciate it, I would shut it down immediately. Right. That's I don't rude. mind. I don't mean. Yeah. Right. Right. So there's a there's a rudeness to it. And if it's and if I feel it's not even a joke, it's like. You know, you got more money than me. You know that I, I'm, I'm like, I, you know, I care about you and I'm, I'm picking this up because I, I feel this. Is, but the, when you start joking about it, I'm like, mm. and, I, and I'm not saying I would jump out the window, but I would be like, look, let, let's be clear. Yeah, uh, let's be clear that I pay everything. OK, yeah. so I, I don't like I don't I don't like that kind of joke. Like I, I make it uncomfortable. Yeah, I go, it's, it's one because. Because if you don't, so, so here's, you know, I've, I've been saying this in the, for a couple of weeks now. I said, I've never known anybody who was disrespectful or unappreciative where all of a sudden I let it go and then they became more appreciative. Hmm. Whenever they're disrespectful, unappreciative, it always gets worse. It, it, yeah. It's never a situation where it gets better. So if there's a joke about this uh, da, 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 and maybe it was in a playful way, but it's five months in, that's only going to get worse. Right. Because there becomes this level. I mean, and it's and, and it's not just women. It's just people. I think human beings have a level of entitlement about a, a, a level of privilege and entitlement, you know? Well, yeah. Once someone thinks it's expected, that's when people can forget to be appreciative. If people I used to, I used to say this all the time and, and yeah. do anything. If you do anything for a woman more than three times, it's no longer a favor. It's an obligation, you know, um, and I and I want to be clear. It's I don't got it. I don't got to do shit. Right. Like, uh, no, the, yeah, you still owe no one. You owe no one anything. So, right. and and then when they say, "Oh, you don't have to do that," and I, I've said, Harry's been there. I'm going. I, like, I know. I know. I know. I don't have to do nothing. I don't have to ever do nothing. So I don't need you to tell me. To, no, I was just saying. Uh, okay, I, I understand you were saying, but let me be clear. I know that I don't have to do anything ever. I can do what the fuck I want to do, and if I do something, it's because I want to. So you don't give me permission. You, I will not let you give me permission for doing what I want to do or what I think is right. Dante, that's you, never, you have my permission to buy me dinner. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, that's, I, I, I literally, uh, I remember, I remember I broke up with this girl. I, I, I was, uh, she was, she was at my house and I'm, I'm walking her to her car and I go, give me a bag. 
you know, she's got a bunch of stuff because I had, I had bought her a bunch of things. Right. She was starting a podcast and I had bought her. It was her birthday and I bought her like a sound, you know, one of those wraparound sound booths and a mic and a record. You know what I mean? I like I hooked up. So all she had to do was record. Sure. And um, I go uh, and I'm, I'm helping her get all the stuff to the car and I go, give me your bag. And she said, say, please. And I go, I got to I got to ask i gotta say please to carry your fucking bag i go yo we're done, <laughs> we're done. It's, a, it's fair that's a fair point yeah I, i'm i'm asking i need to ask you i go we're we're done i'm already and doing she, you a favor like it, a it, small it, one but yeah but yeah. It, and it's not a small one because i literally bought all the things that she was taking to her car in the first uh, place it was like okay. but the but the point is like you know a lot of times people will say and, and Harry will testify. People think that I jump out the window too quick. Mm, I but used to I, think that. But <laughs> but it's like I said, it's never a situation where the disrespect happens and then it gets better. It never gets better. It will only get worse. You will only be taken advantage of more. And so you can nip it in the bud now or you can be mad about nipping it in the bud. But I'm like the, the audacity for you to tell me that I need to say please to carry your bag says something about you as a person. Like, mm-hmm. I understand it's not the actual infraction. It's it's what the infraction alludes to your selfishness your ability not to be aware of your surroundings, the fact that you I've been so kind to you and now you're comfortable with it. What else is going to happen? But you're going to become more comfortable with it. So, so you, I you back. I, never, up. I, I, I jump. I, I'm, I, I'm out on, on a real on a relationship. You're pretty willing to just go. All right. Just cut it like oh, yeah. off. Uh, off. Uh, is that because, is that because you've well, been be, so much bullshit? No, no, no. It's just because. This is, you know, I always talk about this as subtext to what people do. There's a real they're commun- people are communicating all the time. Like I, like I was a street dude. I ran the streets. If you don't, if you don't catch the 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 the, the, the red flag, you 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 literally could end up shot. You could end up dead. So I I've always been perceptive of what the inference to to what somebody's saying. But if you're looking at somebody and they're going, they're going, you have you have paid everything. It was my birthday. You bought all of these things for me. It was thoughtful. It was it was a thoughtful gift. It was plus it was about six to seven hundred bucks in equipment and the stuff I'm carrying oh, the stuff. Sh- oh, jeez. And, and then you go. That's yeah. Top well, of that. Give me like, give me a bag. Give me a bag. Uh, and then you go uh, say, please. Uh, yeah, but we're yeah. done. You're like, bitch, say thank you. What the fuck? I don't even go say thank you. I'm not even having the discussion. I've already made my decision that I'm done. Uh Now, I'm not saying that we can't renegotiate, Mm -hmm. but I want you to understand I'm willing to end this yesterday. I'm I'm willing to end this relationship yesterday. Um, And and because I don't want to I don't want to change. Like, so here's a you have a really useful spirit you know if that kind of youthful creative spirit and when people are abusive they they can steal that away from you oh wow dude you know I, we might be wrapping up somewhat soon but i know that feeling i i was well, in a relationship why don't we continue describe. this on the patreon yeah, yeah let's right, go actually. let's talk about it um plug right. it plug your shit plug it, whatever you want to plug we've, we've plugged it but yeah our special brett ray will retire some comedy it's on youtube uh in english or mandarin and then mm-hmm. uh brett coin brettcoin.org to learn more it's for sale if you know uh crypto it's uh trading on uniswap.org uh at about 12 cents per token so you put it down a uh, hundred dollars, you can have around a thousand Brett coin. You know, I think it's a good investment. I think I'm going to get it out there. And even if somehow I can't get it as famous, well, then my comedy career will eventually pick it up because, uh, you know, I think I'm going to be eventually a made man. But no promises. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a financial guru. So, uh, okay. I mean, if everybody <laughs> listening buys a couple Brett. You game stop this thing. That's uh, the, that's the <laughs> hope is like, you know, right. And then with this token, I intend to make a movie that, uh, you know, it's going to cost a lot, but I'm trying to eventually raise enough to make what I think will be a, a good movie. So it's, cool. it's going to not just me eating cereal in my pajamas. 
Dope, dope. Harry, talk to me. Uh, you could go to my website, uh, IHateComedy.com, all my stuff at Harry Trajanian. But the most important stuff is uh, go to Patreon.com slash Manschool202 and uh, all of our stuff on TikTok as well. So uh, Everything, just Google me, bitch. Dante Nero, uh, Instagram, the Dante Nero, Facebook, all that good shit. Uh, my website, if you want to book some time with me, DanteNero.com, click on consult, you can get me. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. We are out. Follow us on Patreon, really important. Support us because, uh, so we can keep doing this. Later. Man School 202 is created by Dante Nero, hosted by Dante Nero with Harry Turjanian and Andre D. Thompson, produced by Harry Turjanian, executive producers Matt Kleinschmidt, Harry Turjanian, and Dante Nero.